Hi guys, in this session we're going to be looking at um, dividing index expressions. So let's get started. So we've got our first question here, x to the power of 5 divided by x squared. Now, if I was to do this the long method, I would uh, write out x to the power of 5 in the numerator, which is x times x times x times x. I really should have used a smaller x to the power of something. And of course, x squared at the bottom, I've got x multiplied by x. Now, because everything is being um, multiplied here, what we can do is um, we can start cancelling out x's. Uh, so for example, I know that this x divided by x is going to be 1, and then this one divided by the other x is also equal to 1, which means I've actually got three x's that are that are remaining in the numerator. And I shouldn't say three x's, I should have really said x to the power of three, because it's x times x times x. So just like last time, do you guys notice a pattern between these three numbers here? Now, if you had said five minus two is three, then you're absolutely right. So this is the difference between multiplying and dividing. In multiplying, you add the powers, in dividing, you subtract the powers. So the shorter way of doing x to the power of 5 over 2 would be to write it as x to the power of 5 minus 2, which equals x to the power of 3. So really quick example, if I have y to the power of 7 divided by y cubed, then this would equal y to the power of 7 minus 3, which in turn equals y to the power of 4. And in some cases, you will get something that looks like this. y to the power of 3 divided by y. All right. And a lot of, a lot of people, what they do is they think that, that there's actually a 0 there. That's not correct. If you have a y and it doesn't have a power, then it usually means that, well, actually, no, it doesn't usually. It always means that it has a power of 1. So in this case, we're going to get... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how you get y squared. So if I actually put this as y equals 3 minus 1, then that would be y squared. Now, if I was to do this the long method, I would have three lots of y's and the numerator. And in the denominator, I have 1. Cancel out each other. And as you can see, I have y squared in the numerator and this is the same as this cool moving on to the next question or next type of question this time uh putting a, a variable oh, sorry not a variable we're putting a number in front so we've got 25 and 5 now we know that 25 divided by 5 is going to be 5 so that means uh, what we can do is i mean people do it in many different ways the way i like to do it is i like to cross this out and write that as one and that is 5 because I know that uh, the two 5s uh, are common factors in the numerator. And so the top is going to be 5. And as for the variable, I've got x to the power of 5 in the numerator, x to the power of 1 in the denominator. So which means this is going to be x to the power of 4. Okay. If you want to see this done the long method, watch this. 25 can be written as 5 times 5. And then x to the power of 5 could be written, yep, got to choose a smaller power. And then in the numerator, I have 5 multiplied by 1x. And what you'll notice is, as I start cancelling things out, so I've got two 5s get rid of each other, 1x there and 1x there. And what you should notice is I've got 5 in the numerator and I've got 1, 2, 3, so x to the power of 4. And as you can see, these two answers are the same answers. All right, next type of question. So this time I got 16 over 20, y to the power of 5 and y to the power of 6. Now notice how the power at the bottom is, um, at the denominator is actually bigger. So if I was to do this the long way, now with 16 and 20, you know, You've got to know your times tables and know, got to know your common factors. I know for a fact that 16 and 20, are, they have a common factor of 4. So 
I could write this up as 4 times 4 and then y to the power of 5. So I've got y, y, y. Why did I choose such a big number? And 20y6 can be written as 4 times 5 and 6 y. How many have I got there? I've got five. All right, sweet. So at this point, I can cancel out my fours because they're common factors. And then with the y's, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Basically, this sums up uh, in the numerator, I've got a four. And in the denominator, I've got five y. All right, now have a look at... Um, how could I? How else could I do this? Um, I, the other way I would do this is if I have 16 y phi and 20 y six. What I tend to do is I know that four is a common factor, which means I divide both numbers by four, and I end up with four here. 20 divided by four is five, which means I'm left over with. 4y to the power of 5 and 5y to the power of 6. Now, this is the connection I want you guys to see. I could write this as 4 over 5, y to the power of 5 minus 6. Now, 5 minus 6 is equal to y to the power of negative 1. And I guess what the connection that I want you guys to see is that these two answers are exactly the same answer. All right, because there's nothing nothing I've done wrong. The only thing that's actually different is the position of y. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that if you ever get something like this, 1 over y, this is the same thing as saying y to the power of negative 1. Now, if you don't get that yet, don't worry. As you do more questions, it'll make sense. All right, I've gone way over time in this case. Um, so thank you for watching. If there's any questions, just pop it in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. Cool. Thank you for watching.